All right, here in lesson 6-6, six, six, we're going to start doing some new fun things um, with function operations. So we're going to have two, um, sometimes three functions, and we're going to multiply, divide, add, subtract them. Um, so we're going to be asking the question, how do we combine functions? And we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them, and then find the composite of two functions. I know those are all kind of big words and they sound really ambiguous and kind of scary, um, but it's actually pretty fun. Um, so here, let's talk about function operations first. So if we have f plus g of x, what we're going to do is we're going to add f of x plus g of x. So addition just means add the two together. So subtraction, f minus g of x just means f of x minus g of x. So we're going to subtract those two functions. Multiplication means we multiply them together. Division means we divide them. And g of x, whatever is in the denominator, cannot be 0. Why can it not be 0? Because you can't divide by 0. It's undefined. Okay, so this is just um, to keep in mind, the domain of the sum, difference, product, and quotient functions consist of the x values that are in the domains of both f and g. So after you combine your functions, you have to give the domain. So any values that make it so that um, you don't have any negative numbers, any imaginary numbers, you're not going to divide by zero. Also, the domain of the quotient function does not contain any x value that makes your denominator zero. So you have to make sure that when you um, combine your functions that you're paying attention to what your domain needs to be. So let's get started. Um, let f of x be 4x plus 7 and g of x be the square root of x plus x. What are f plus g and f minus g and what are their domains? Well, if they're just asking for what's f plus g, all that means is you're going to add the two functions together. So f plus g of x means f of x, 4x plus 7, plus g of x, square root of x plus x. So all that means is we're going to add these two together. So we add our like terms. We have a 4x and an x. So we have 5x plus square root of x plus 7. Can we combine any more things? No, so we just leave it like that. For f minus g of x, that just means we're taking f of x, 4x minus 7, and we're subtracting in the quantity, square root of x plus x. So what that means is we need to distribute this negative through, so it's minus square root of x minus x, because we're subtracting both values. So 4x minus x is 3x minus square root of x, minus 7. So that's all that means. Um, now when we're talking about their domains, is there anything that x cannot be? Well, if you look at either um, this 5x or this 3x, x can be any number. But if you're looking at this square root of x, is there anything that x cannot be? Well, to be a real number, x cannot be negative. So we're going to say our domain for both of these are x greater than or equal to 0. Because if square root of 0 is 0, anything bigger than that, we can take the square root of. That's no big deal. All right. So that's just the adding and subtracting part. All right. Why don't you go ahead and try this one really quick. Um, f of x is 2x squared plus x, and g of x is x minus 3. What are f plus g and f minus g, and then what are their domains? Go ahead and pause the video, write it down super fast, so it'll take you like a minute. Alright, so here you see when you add them together, and when you subtract them, you get 2x squared plus x plus 5, and 2x squared minus x plus 11. Now, do we have any restrictions on what our x can be? Can x be negative? Sure. Um, can x be positive? Can we take the square root of all these numbers? Well, we don't have any square roots. So our domain is all real numbers. We have no restrictions on what x can be. x can be anything. All right, multiplying and dividing functions. So let f of x be x squared minus 9 and g of x be x plus 3. What are f times g and f divided by g, and what are their domains? Okay, so when we're going to multiply and divide, um, what we're going to do when we multiply is, you know, we have two binomials, so we're just going to multiply them like we multiply binomials. Um, and then when we divide, we're going to factor and see if we can cancel out any of the variables, or any of the factors, excuse me. 
Okay, so when we multiply f times g of x, we have x squared minus 9 times x plus 3. So we're going to FOIL x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 3 is 3x squared. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Sorry, that's a plus. And negative 9 times positive 3 is negative 27. Uh, do we have any restrictions on what our values of x can be? Nope. So our domain is all real numbers. Okay, for f divided by g of x, we're going to take x squared minus 9 and divide it by x plus 3. Can we factor x squared minus 9? Yes, that factors into x plus 3, x minus 3 all over x plus 3. Do you notice that we have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator? We do. You can't just cancel out x's and cancel out, um, you can't cancel this way, like this, because we have this addition and subtraction in between, we have to take out a whole factor. So we're going to multiply by x plus 3 and divide by x plus 3. So those cancel, and so we get x minus 3. Now, um, when we talk about our domain, we have to go back to our original. So is there a value that would make our denominator be 0? Yes, there is. So we're going to say it's um, all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 3. Because if we plug in negative 3, that would make our denominator be 0. So we cannot do that. Okay, and here we have composite functions. This is um, where we have two different functions that we want to combine into one function. So um, we read this as g of f and is defined as um, like you're placing one inside the other one. So the domain of g of s consists of the x values in the domain of f for which f of x is the domain of g. So we're putting a function inside a function. Alright, so we're going to evaluate f of x first because that's the part that's closest to the x. And then once we figure that out, then we put it in for g of x. So we have two different methods that we're going to use. You can use whichever one makes more sense to you. So if we let f of x be x minus 5 and g of x be x squared, what is g of f of negative 3? Okay, the f is closest to the negative 3, so we evaluate that first. Actually, I think we're doing... Okay, so we're going to do um, another method first. So g of f of x, so you write it all as one function. So f of x is the inside part. So we're going to take f of x and place that in for the x in g. I know it sounds very confusing. So we're going to take this f of x and put it in for the x in the g, or in for this one. So if f of x is x minus 5, we're going to put x minus 5 into the x of g. So g is x minus 5, and g is x squared, but now our x instead of being x is x minus 5 from our f of x. So we have x minus 5 squared. So we have a binomial that's squared, so we have to FOIL it, x minus 5 times x minus 5. Um, or... I guess you don't have to. You could just plug in your negative 3 right there. Um, we could do it both ways, though. Either way is fine. So negative 3 minus 5 squared. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. So that's one method. So you plug in a function into your other function, and then you evaluate. Or method 2 just says, hey, we want to have this function at this number, so let's go ahead and just plug in this number. So we're plugging in, remember our f of x is x minus 5, so we want negative 3. So we're going to take negative 3 minus 5, that's negative 8, and then we're going to plug that into our g, g of x. So instead of doing g of x, we're doing g of negative 8, so negative 8 squared is 64. 
Both methods are good. Both methods will get you to the same answer. Um, sometimes um, one's going to be easier than the other one. Sometimes it'll get more complicated. All right, using composite functions. You have a coupon good for $5 off the price of any large pizza. You also get a 10% discount on any pizza if you show your student ID. How much more would you pay for a large pizza if the cashier applies the coupon first? So we're talking about applying the coupon first versus taking off um, the 10% first. So either way, you're going to get a discount. Which one's going to give you the better discount? So we need to first make functions that model the cost of a large pizza. So if we let the price of the pizza be x, um, using the coupon, c of x is x minus 5, so our price minus $5. Or if we get the 10% discount, um, we have the price minus 10% of that price. So 10% um, is 0.1. So one whole cost minus that 10% of that cost means 0.9x. And that's how we got the 0.9x. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these two together and find out um, which gives us a better discount, applying the coupon and then our 10% or applying the 10% and then our coupon. So we're going to do the um, our discount first. So our discount is 0.9, so we have 0.9x. We're going to plug that in for our um, composite function to so 0.9x minus 5. And then we're going to do it the opposite way where we do the discount uh, or we do the coupon first, so we take off the $5 first, and then we apply the discount. So you plug those in, um, and you wind up with 0.9x minus 4.5. So if you see, you compare these two functions, 0.9x minus 5, 0.9x minus 4.5, how much money are we going to save? Well, we subtract the two, and we're going to save 50 cents. So you pay 50 cents more by the cashier um, applying the discount first and then the coupon. All right, so this is going to be your lesson check. Um, I know this is going to take a little bit of brain work and a little bit of um, discussion maybe with a partner. So I want you to read these two um, or read this problem. The store is offering a 15% discount on all items. All employees get a 20% employee discount. So write a composite function to model taking off the 15% and then the 20% and then a model that takes off the 20% and then the 15%. And I want you to compare and see when you're going to get a better deal, um, applying the store and then the employee or applying the employee and then the store discount. Okay, and I want you to talk about this with your partner. That's the first thing you're going to do in class. Um, also, your homework is to do Lesson 6-6 on Math Excel, and I hope you have a great night.